The shooting of the 12 police officers in Dallas, Texas, has shaken the soul of our nation. Just a few weeks ago, I met with many of the men and women in the Dallas Police Force during my visit to Texas. They're not just police officers. They're mothers and fathers, husbands and wives, sons and daughters. And they're all on my mind today. They're on everybody's mind. A brutal attack on our police force is an attack on our country and an attack on our families. We must stand in solidarity with law enforcement, which we must remember is the force between civilization and total chaos. Every American has the right to live in safety and peace. The deaths of Alton Sterling in Louisiana and Philando Castile in Minnesota also make clear how much more work we have to do to make every American feel that their safety is protected. Too many Americans are living in terrible poverty and violence. We need jobs, and we're going to produce those jobs. Racial divisions have gotten worse, not better. Too many headlines flash across our screens every day about the rising crime and rising death tolls in our cities. Now is the time for prayers, love, unity, and leadership. Our children deserve a better future than what we're making them live through today. But to get them there, we must work together and stand together. We will make America safe again. You've done anything to create a tone where this kind of violence would be encouraged. I hope not. I truly hope not. Get that guy out of here. Get him out of here. In the good old days, this doesn't happen because they used to treat them very, very rough. And when they protested once, you know, they would not do it again so easily. In the good old days, they'd rip him out of that seat so fast. I'd like to punch him in the face, I'll tell you. All right, yeah, get him out. Try not to hurt him. If you do, I'll defend you in court. Don't worry about it. I love the old days. You know what they used to do to guys like that when they were in a place like this? They'd be carried out on a stretcher, folks. All right, get him out of here, please. Get him out. Get him out of here. Knock the crap out of him, would you? Seriously. Okay? Just knock the hell. So much fun. I love it. I love it. We having a good time? USA. USA. is we need to build a wall and it has to be built quickly. Και δεν κάνουμε τίποτα. Το βλέπεις αλλού και εδώ θα θέλαμε να κάνεις ένα σχόλιο. Mm -hmm. Στην Αμερική τώρα που γίνονται προκληματικές yeah, εκλογές στους Ρεπουμπλικάνους και στους Δημοκράτες. Στους Ρεπουμπλικάνους από ό,τι φαίνεται τον Τόναλ Τραμπ θα είναι ο δοφαβορή, yeah. αν επιζήσει. Yeah. Γιατί πολλοί λένε ότι yeah. δεν yeah. θα yeah. καταφέρει yeah. να φτάσει στο νήμα για άλλους λόγους. Γιατί από ό,τι φαίνεται τα λέει πολύ στα ράτα, πολύ ντόμπρα. Yeah. Το τελευταίο yeah. που είπε, που είπε μια φοβερή yeah. ατάκα, καλύτερα να ζεις μια μέρα σαν λιοντάρι παρά 100 χρόνια σαν πρόβατο. Και όταν του είπαν αυτό το είπε ο Μουσολίνη και λέει δεν με νοιάζει ποιος το είπε, λέει είναι πάρα πολύ ωραίο. Yeah. Είναι πολύ καλός, είναι αυτός που απάντησε yeah. καταλήλως και στον Πάπα της Ρώμης. Yeah. Είναι yeah. πολύ γεγονός. Yeah. Yeah. Φοβερή απάντηση. Yeah. Όταν και ο Πάπας yeah. της Ρώμης και παραμονής εκλογών. Και παραμονής εκλογών. Δηλαδή να πει ότι και τον ανάγκασε τον Πάπα να απολογηθεί μετά. Τι είπε ο Πάπα, τι είναι αυτά τα οποία λέτε για Πρόθυμα. σύνορα, για ε, γέφυρε, για φυλασσόμενα το ένα το άλλο, δεν είναι χριστιανικά κτλ. Και, και το απάντησε ο Τραμπ, του είπε τρει ατάκε. Πρώτη ατάκα, ότι το Βατικανό είναι από τα πιο οχυρωμένα κρατήδια στον κόσμο. Κάτι πανίψηλα τύχη, με ασφάλεια που δεν μπορεί να ζυγώσει κανεί, αν, αν κτλ. Κατά δεύτερον, απάντησε ο Τραμπ στο, ο Τραμπ στον Πάπα ότι όταν θα σου επιτεθεί το ISIS, να παρακαλά να είμαι πλανητάρχη για, για το πώ θα πρέπει να αντιδράσω. Εντάξει, και το απάντησε μετά ο επανήλθε ο, ο, ο Πάπα τη Ρώμη, ο προκαθήμενο τη Ρωμαντοκαθολική Εκκλησία, και είπε: Δεν εννοούσε αυτά ακριβώ και τα μάσια ναι, κάπως κτλ. Όποιο τα λέει όπω πρέπει να τα λέει, στο τέλο βγαίνει δικαιωμένο. And I don't mind having a big, beautiful door in that wall so that people can come into this country legally. 
but we need to build a wall. 19 trillion going to 21 trillion, not billion. We have trillions. Nobody even knows what a trillion is. And these are guys that study NATO. You know why? They're so close to it. Did you ever get so close to a deal or a job that you don't really see it? You don't see the big picture. And they also said it's not fair that we're carrying all these countries. I said that very strongly. We've got to... Now, one of the things I do early on and I didn't say get rid of NATO, but I'm prepared to walk because I'm not going to let you defend other countries and keep raising your taxes. You're the highest tax people in the world. And I would say you're delinquent. Like an apartment, when somebody's with me, they owe me rent. I say, how many months? Two months, three months. I say, you better get it quick. But they're delinquent. You call them delinquent. These countries are delinquent. Now they're delinquent. You know why? Because they think we're stupid. That's why. Why should they pay? You know, you look at the Ukraine. We're always saying, we'll fight. We'll this, we'll that. I don't hear any country over there talking about the Ukraine. It's always us talking. We're paying 73% the cost of NATO. You have 28 countries. The United Nations. When was the last time you saw the... I built a building right opposite the United Nations. Probably destroyed the building's value if they leave. I don't care. I don't care. I no longer care. I care about this. This is the big picture, folks. This is the big picture. The fact is, we need to build a wall. And it has to be built quickly. Και δεν κάνουμε τίποτα. Και βλέπεις αλλού, και εδώ θα ήθελα να κάνεις ένα σχόλιο, mm -hmm. Στην Αμερική τώρα που γίνονται προκληματικέ εκλογέ στου Ρεπουμπλικάνου και στου Δημοκράτε. Στου Ρεπουμπλικάνου, από ό,τι φαίνεται, ο Ντόναλτ Τραμπ θα είναι ο δοφοβορή, αν επιζήσει. Γιατί πολλοί λένε ότι <laughs> δεν θα <laughs> καταφέρει <laughs> να φτάσει στο νήμα για άλλου λόγου. Γιατί από ό,τι φαίνεται, τα λέει πολύ στα ράτα, πολύ ντόμπρα. Ναι. Το Υπάρχει, τελευταίο ναι. που, είπε, που είπε μια φοβερή <laughs> ατάκα. Καλύτερα να ζει μια μέρα σαν λιοντάρι παρά 100 χρόνια σαν πρόβατο. Και όταν του είπαν αυτό, το είπε ο Μουσολίνη και λέει: Δεν με νοιάζει ποιο το είπε, λέει, είναι πάρα πολύ ωραίο. Είναι πολύ καλό, είναι αυτό που απάντησε καταλήλω και στον Πάπα τη Ρώμη. Πριν από λίγε μέρε, έδωσε φοβερή απάντηση. Όταν ο Πάπα τη Ρώμη. Και παραμονή εκλογών. Και παραμονή εκλογών. Δηλαδή να πει ότι. Και τον ανάγκασε τον Πάπα να απολογηθεί μετά. Τι είπε ο Πάπα, τι είναι αυτά τα οποία λέτε για σύνορα, για γέφυρε, για φυλασσόμενα το ένα το άλλο, δεν είναι χριστιανικά κτλ. Και το Πάπα του Τραμπ του είπε τρει ατάκε. Πρώτη ατάκα. Ότι το Βατικανό είναι από τα πιο οχυρωμένα κρατήδια στον κόσμο. Κάτι πανίψηλα τύχη, με ασφάλεια που δεν μπορεί να ζυγώσει κανεί, αν, αν και τα λοιπά. Κατά δεύτερον, απάντησε ο Τραμπ στο, Donald Trump στον Πάπα ότι όταν θα σου επιτεθεί το ISIS, να παρακαλά να είμαι πλανητάρχη για, για το πώ θα πρέπει να αντιδράσω. Εντάξει, και το απάντησε μετά ο. Επανήλθε ο, ο, ο Πάπα τη Ρώμη, προκαθήμενο τη Ρωμαιοκαθολική Εκκλησία. Και είπε δεν εννοούσε αυτά ακριβώ και τα μάσια ναι, κάπως και τα λοιπά. Ναι. Όποιος τα λέει όπως πρέπει να τα λέει, στο τέλος γίνει δικαιωμένος. And I don't mind having a big beautiful door in that wall so that people can come into this country legally. But we need to build a wall.
allowed in presidential debates? Well, I'll answer for myself first, and then I'll let uh, Donald Trump answer certainly for himself. Uh, I think it's despicable. Uh, I think it's a clear case of them fearing there could be another Jesse Ventura and that they're going to stop in any way they possibly can because uh, for those of you that are national and weren't here in Minnesota when I ran, uh, at the point of the primary, I was only polling 10% which means that if you went by their criteria, I would not have been allowed to debate and subsequently would have not won the election. And it also shows great fear on their part in the fact that a candidate like me can be at 10% and can turn around in a mere six weeks and win. And it's obviously clear to me that they don't want that to happen again. And uh, I think it's cheating the American public. I think, as I said, it's despicable on their part and I would hope people would be as outraged about it as I am. Uh, the third, all other criteria and major party status is listed at 5%, 5% to be major party, 5% for federal funding and all that. Yet on debating, it's 15% now. And rest assured, if we came in with a 15%, they'd raise it to 20. It would be based upon whatever it takes to keep us out. Take a look at 92 when, when Ross Perot ran and got 19% of the vote. That's one out of every five people that voted, voted for Ross Perot, and yet the next election he was cut out of it. And I think that it's unfair uh, to put pollsters in that position. It's shirking the duty of what this committee is supposed to do. And uh, now they're putting it onto the pollsters. Well, it's the pollsters that decide. Well, a poll can be skewered. I can go out and get you a poll on anything you want and probably get the results that I want, just in how I conduct it. And I think it's, it's bad, it's terrible that, yeah, that lobbyists, professional lobbyists today are now deciding who will be allowed to debate for President of the United States. And it's obvious they don't want us in the Reform Party because we don't, they don't make money off us. They don't have influence with us. So typical to lobbying, they're being lobbied and they're now doing their lobbying. Pretty sad. Well, I agree 100% with Jesse. Uh, it's disgraceful. It's amazing that they can get away with it. The Republicans and Democrats are the ones that, as you know, chose the, I guess you have three members of each and they're the ones that chose. Uh, if you look at your lobbyists and everyone else, they're all Republicans or Democrats. And I'll add one additional thing. I watched the Republican debate last night, and I'll tell you what, if the right person was debating against whoever the winner of that group is, they'd have a major impact on the election, because that was not a very, uh, a very inspiring group of people that I was watching last night. So I think they're very concerned. I think they're extremely nervous about it. Uh, and I also think that probably the law may be will be uh, changed in this case, or the rule may be changed in this case, Jesse, because it's just inconceivable to me that they can allow this to happen. Would you be willing to go to court to challenge it? I think I probably would. I mean, Pat Buchanan's right now in court. He's going to get nowhere probably, but the fact is that let him spend his money first. Let's see how he does. If he doesn't do it, we'll step in and maybe we can do something. But the fact is, it seems very, very unfair to me. But would either of you guys get 15%? I mean, I, well, I think this guy would, and I think Based on our polls, we would. Based on what uh, we've done internally, we would. If people think that I'm running, we do great. A lot of people say, oh, he's maybe not going to run. He's just having lots of fun. That's not the case. If people think that we're running, seriously running, we do very well. I just think it's unfair, though, regardless of that, to have such a high standard, a high criteria for a party that's a legitimate party that has a substantial amount of federal funding that's recognized and we're at some point during this process, somebody's going to be in all 50 states. Very unfair.